Hey everybody. The purpose of this video is going to be to walk you through our lab activity about manganese chloride. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to see if a piece of manganese, which is a transition metal, reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce manganese chloride. We're looking at what the formula is of the manganese chloride. And what a formula for a compound represents is a ratio of moles of different element. And so you're going to be reacting a piece of manganese with some hydrochloric acid to produce manganese chloride, but you're not sure in what ratio. The number of chlorine atoms per manganese atom will represent the charge on the manganese and its oxidation state. Transition metals have multiple oxidation states and that's why this is a mystery. We're wondering what ratio of atoms of manganese to chlorine are in manganese chloride when a piece of solid manganese reacts with hydrochloric acid. Now, the reason why we're doing this lab in our unit on the periodic table and elements and electron configurations is that manganese, and indeed most D-block metals, except for things like silver, zinc, and a few others, are what are called transition metals. Metals that are not transition metals, things that are like lithium, sodium, potassium, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, in the S block, as well as some of those in the D block, like zinc, silver, cadmium, are called representative metals. They would lose the same number of electrons in all reactions to become stable. So for instance, these from lithium down are all group one metals. They are representative metals because they always will lose one valence electron to become stable and become ions with a one plus charge. That's called their oxidation number is plus one. From beryllium down to radium, those are all representative metals because they always lose two electrons in reactions, becoming two plus ions. They all have a stable oxidation number of plus two. But transition metals like manganese have multiple ways that they can become stable or semi-stable, losing different numbers of electrons, having different charges, depending on what they're paired with, and having different oxidation numbers. We'll look at an off-bow diagram of manganese to see why that is. Now you can see that with 25 electrons, a neutral atom of manganese would have an off-bow diagram that looks like this. And what happens first with transition metals is that the first electrons that they lose to become an ion are their 4s, because 4 is the highest principal energy level. Losing one wouldn't make it stable, and so it first loses two. And therefore, the first stable oxidation state and charge for manganese is manganese 2 plus. Other stable oxidation states and charges for manganese are 3 plus, 4 plus, 6 plus, and 7 plus. And the form that manganese would take depends largely on what other elements it is paired with and how many electrons it would lose to those other elements. And so what we're trying to figure out is which of those oxidation states is the one that manganese has when it reacts and pairs with chlorine.
So these are the five stable oxidation states and charges for manganese. And again, we're trying to figure out which of these it is when manganese is paired with chlorine in manganese chloride. And the way that we can figure that out is by figuring out the formula for that substance, the correct formula. Now what an empirical formula tells you is the ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. And this is going to help us because if we can figure out how many chlorine atoms are paired with the manganese, we know that chlorine's most common and stable oxidation state is one minus. And so based on how many chlorine atoms there are paired with each manganese, if the manganese were the seven plus version, then there would be seven atoms of chlorine paired with it. It would be MnCl7 would be its empirical formula. The subscript that comes after an element tells how many atoms there are in that substance. With no subscript, it's implied that there is just one atom of that element. Now, again, atoms are so small that we are not going to be able to count how many atoms of manganese and atoms of chlorine there are. But instead, we know that atoms, the number of atoms in a sample, can be described by how many moles of that sample or that element. And so we can cross the word atom off in this definition and replace it with the word mole. And what that means is we could measure the mass of manganese in our compound that we created, and we could measure the mass of chlorine in our compound that we created, and we can convert them to moles. And we'll look at the mole ratio, which will tell us the ratio of atoms, an empirical formula, which will tell us which of these charges, which oxidation state the manganese has. And so there were really only three pieces of numerical data collected. The first was the mass of your empty glassware. And in the video, mine was 24.772 grams. Next, I put in some manganese and I recorded the new mass of the glassware with the manganese. And I recorded a mass of 24.978 grams. And then on day two, the manganese chloride product with the glassware. Now the overall strategy is that we need to find the mass of manganese and the mass of chlorine in this compound. To find the mass of manganese, it's going to be the difference between these two. And to find the mass of chlorine that was added into the compound, it's going to be the difference between these two. Now that we've got masses of both of these elements that were in our substance, we're going to convert them to moles. And to convert grams to moles, it's one mole on the top of the conversion fraction. And on the bottom will be the molar mass of each element. When you find those molar masses and you do this correctly, I got that I had 0 0.00375 moles of manganese. and 0 0.0150 moles of chlorine. You're going to divide both of these by the smallest amount so that you can get a 
ratio. And so it would be one manganese and 3.99 chlorine. Now the subscript in a formula are whole numbers and so this is very close to four. And so my formula for manganese chloride that I produced would be MnCl4. Because chlorine has a one minus charge, I've got four of these. And so I calculated that it is the manganese four plus ion that was produced, the manganese plus four oxidation state. Now I know that that is not correct because the color of the compound was whitish pink, whereas the color of manganese with a four plus charge is dark green. And I know that the correct answer is that it should have been MnCl2, the manganese two plus. And there are a number of sources of error in this lab that we want you to work through. The quality and purity of the starting materials, the manganese specifically, and the quality and purity of the manganese chloride. Manganese chloride is called a hydrate. It's a chemical that locks water molecules into its crystal structure. And so some of those water molecules were probably left behind and influencing the mass of chlorine that I thought I had. And so all of the mass that I thought was chlorine was really chlorine plus some water molecules still locked in that hydrate. Lastly, to write the name of this, when you have a metal that can have multiple charges or oxidation states, you need to write the correct one in parentheses when you write its name out. And so because there are four chlorines, each with a one minus charge, the manganese is a four plus charge, and I need to write that it's manganese with a four plus charge. Again, I know that this is not the correct answer, but this is what my data show.